my name is Derek Moulton. I'm an associate professor in Mathematical Institute at the University of Oxford. My research area is, in particular, mathematical mechanical biology. I take a question motivated by the biological world, phrase it in terms of mathematical language by looking at the mechanical forces involved, and then try to answer the question by mathematical techniques. I'm very interested in, in seashells. Seashells have this very simple and basic pattern, this logarithmic spiral, but this is a very universal pattern. It's seen in many places beyond seashells. From an evolutionary standpoint, a scientific standpoint, shells are of tremendous interest. It's a mollusk, that's the creature that lives in and builds the shell, form the second largest phylum in the animal kingdom. They date back to 500 million years ago. There's massive diversity and there's a huge fossil record as well. Questions about evolution of mollusks are always based on looking at the shell, how it's changed and diversified through time. But while the changes themselves are well documented, the reason for those changes is not at all clear. How does the shell form? Why does the shell look the way it does? Why don't all shells look the same? It's a very difficult thing with shells because there are no videos where you just watch a shell growing. You can't really do experiments on a shell and test that exactly what you think is happening is going to happen. What you do have is this massive fossil record. And you have a few quantifiable parameters. You can measure how quickly the shell is expanding. You can measure geometrical parameters like that. And then you can feed them into your, to your model. So we set out trying to just build a, a, a general mathematical framework. That was sort of our first step. With the principle that we want our mathematical framework to be connected to the actual physical activities of the mollusk, the creature that's building the shell. The growth process itself is, is fairly simple. You have growth occurring really on one edge. Through that process, you get this huge diversity of, of patterns that you see. From there, we developed a computational framework so that we could uh, simulate a wide variety of shells. Then what we've been most interested in is looking at uh, what are called ornamentations. So these are the structural patterns on top of the, the basic shell shape, if you want. So this is spines and ridges. This is one of my favorite shells. This is called uh, Murex Troskelli. How does it have those spines? By what process can those spines emerge? As an applied mathematician, I can say, okay, well, if I have a shell that's expanding with this particular rate or it's coiling with this particular rate, what would I expect its ornamentation to look like? And then we can ask whether, whether that prediction agrees with the fossil record. And what we've been able to show is that, in fact, if you have the right growth rate of the creature and the right sort of elastic properties of this tissue, then in fact, you, you can see these spine patterns. Of course, there are many questions that we'd still like to answer because it's not just a single spine is forming, it's, it's multiple spines, but we, we think we're starting to get a grasp on, on the basic process of how these emerge. But for every answer we find, three new questions pop up. And this is actually, I think, the beautiful thing about, about research and about science is there's always more questions to ask. The job is never done, which is maybe depressing in a way, but I think it's fantastic as well.